The Creatives with AI podcast. The spiritual home of creatives curious about AI and its role in their future. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Creatives with AI podcast. I'm your host, Lena Robinson. And today we are going to be chatting with Pete Diane, otherwise known as Artistically Autistic. Welcome, Pete. Hi, hi everyone. Really excited to have you on. So um, everybody, uh, some of you already know that I um, have an art gallery and about, it's almost a year to the day actually that we met at an art exhibition and you were exhibiting and I walked up to you and I saw some of your work and I was like blown away by uh, quite a few of your pieces. They're stunning. Um, and it would be really interesting to hear a little bit more about yourself from your perspective. So introduce yourself to everybody. Sure. Uh, so my, my name is Pete Lewin. I'm also known as Artistically Autistic uh, to people that are aware of my work. Uh, so a bit about who, who I am and where and how I became an artist. Uh, I never started out as an artist. Um, uh, my background is in uh, software engineering. Uh, that's what my degree is in. And that's what my I was a financial system analyst. Uh, for on Wall Street and at the London Stock Exchange for about 11 years. So that was my, I have a very technical background. Um, the reason I turned to art um, illustrating um, was mainly to understand emotions and improve my emotional intelligence. Coming from a, a, a background a lot of people could probably uh, relate to. Um, my parents were good people, but they uh, didn't have it wasn't I would say high emotional intelligence didn't really uh, teach us teach me how to deal with conflict and uh, to navigate um, uh, situations with people so I got into you know you know like a lot of people we get into sort of these petty arguments so it was for me my art was about understanding emotions so be able to manage my mind a lot better to be able to get the best out of myself uh, so my art was just a way of deep diving and looking at these specific emotions uh, so from an art and psychological point of view. Uh, and thanks, uh, you know, um, happy to say that, you know, as a tool, art has been really instrumental for me to understanding autism and my mind and how it works. And I'm able to share my experience through art, um, through art, basically, uh, with a wide range of people from all different backgrounds and you know, uh, my art you know, how I met Lena was through the gallery. So my art slowly growing uh, over time. I'm putting, working really hard towards uh, building up a profile for my art, not mainly because I want the, um, to be in the spotlight. As an autistic person, we generally don't like the spotlight, but yeah. because because of the work I, um, I'm doing, which is about promoting uh, mental health and then people get to understand the basics of their mind and if they want to understand, if they want to learn more they can just they can expand on that through you know a number of books that are available that are online or wherever whatever source they feel comfortable to, uh, reading for me it's just getting hoping you giving people the jumping off point so they can understand and move forward uh, or use the content as a standalone yeah so I'm going to hand you back to Lena, and that's who well, I am. Right cool. Now. So there, there's a couple of other areas that you've um, worked in as well. So you've worked in finance and banking. Um, you've been a policeman at, at one point. And the AI part, which I think is going to be a really interesting conversation with you, obviously we've got the creative and, and art side, but you're also a software engineer as well. So I think those all of that combination of your experience hopefully is going to be you and I have already had many conversations about AI. Yeah. Um, so I think, yeah. and I'm quite happy yeah. for you to challenge me on some of the things as, in my views yeah. as well. Um, so the first question I was going to talk to you about was, you know, the art world obviously is currently being impacted by AI. With regards to your own work, and be free to tell us about what kind of work your artwork is as well, because I don't think we've touched on that. Um, your what the impact of AI has on your artwork at the moment? Are you using it at all? Um, uh, yes, uh, I have started using it. Um, and I had recently just got a subscription for AI art just to play around with it. Uh, again, this is uh, for me, I'm an artist because I would say I'm an artist and not an illustrator because uh, I don't just stick to one medium. I started off, actually, I started off 
doing street art early on in my career, uh, trying to experiment with that in ways to express myself. Uh, found that it was not really for me. Uh, then I moved to illustrating where I had some success. Uh, that's where the bulk of my success is. And that's where I'm building up the, the stories and the art world from. Also, I've moved into, so I don't draw no more because that was just a tool uh, or therapy for that period of my life. So I've moved, progressed on to digital art now. So I've been making sort of animations, short animations, uh, just um, just to play around, you know, uh, with pre old concepts or, you know, develop new concepts. And that that is, you know, um, unfortunately, Instagram hasn't um, really put, um, it, the algorithm hasn't really uh, has kind of hurt that side of things because it hasn't really shown it to people compared to my illustrations. So again, I don't really make art for the algorithm. So I'm just using these as tools to understand and play around with things. Uh, so I'm really happy with the collection, the digital collection, despite um, uh, Instagram not actually showing it to people. I'm you know quite um, proud of the work I put in. So that's uh, the state, the stage where I'm at. But I'm also now starting playing with AI art. Uh, so for me, uh, you know, playing with the subscription, it's, it's been really, really useful for me, uh, positive, because I look, I'm coming at this because I'm a lot of artists is, uh, from a psychological point of view, are filled with being threatened by the, the situation we have with AI art. Because I, you know, I spoke to Lena about it. I think the, the, the thing about, uh, it's, it reminds me of when photography came out, uh, you know, first came out where a lot of artists were doom and gloom and thought it was this is with the end of still, you know, uh, realism, uh, drawing. And, you know, I, I, I'm a big admirer of Picasso and he, you know, spoke about how it was the end of his career and he was, you know, he mm. eventually uh, ended up adapting and going, you know, uh, doing abstract art and, and generally spawned off a whole different movement of art. You know, which is, I think, what is going to happen with AI. You know, I think it's going to be able, it's going to be a very powerful tool uh, from a software engineering point of view, as an, as well as an artist point of view, and it's also going to be a, it's going to branch off and uh, create its own thing, like photography is. Photography is now its own category. You know, so yeah, I, I think, think it's. A lot of people were quite frightened of, you know, that's not the first time I've heard that with regards to the AI, and I use it myself um, as a as an analogy around what I think is happening. Um, but, you know, photography now is seen as a fine a fine art. You know, in my gallery, I have mm. fine art photographers. So it is really interesting. It seems to be patterns. Yeah. Maybe. I agree. I mean, it's 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 just a it's just such a useful tool. You can, you know, in my work line of work, uh, I've been using it to generate concepts, play around with concepts and ideas that would otherwise have taken me a long time to develop using, you know, pencil, the sketching, and uh, in ink ink sign of it, you know, where I can literally play out an idea and see it, it that it doesn't work, and I hit a dead end, and I'm like, okay, I can just just throw that away. And without having committed fully to it, and it just allows me more space to play around with different ideas and can, you know, switch to different ideas and, you know, put my hands on and say, yep, yeah, this idea doesn't work. So move on to the next, you know. It's just been such a useful tool for that. And I've used AR for me. I've created not AI art, but more AI assisted art, um, you know. So for me, I, I use things, I use AI to generate certain images that I want and and I build the art around that you, you know um, to create a whole story to express myself which uh, I, I think I showed one recently to Elena um, so it's about using your imagination and uh, for me it's about telling stories it's just another tool in my arsenal and it's something I'm you know as a creative uh, it's, it's, it's good because you're putting different things together that's what creativity is like you're putting different things together to generate new ideas and new concepts um, you know i think it's again it's there's going to be different levels eventually become different levels of sophisticated ai art for me i was just saying um you it's just like when you people use google there's some people that are are basic googlers they can just google you know look for things and there's people that are really good at googling uh, i probably fit into the intermediate level because i can understand what regular expressions are and i can use them to search for uh, specific patterns on the internet uh, you know, which, you know, not basic news Googlers can't do that. You know, So I think it's going to be similar in that response with AI art. People are going to be able to new understand the prompt and, you know, understand 
the technology behind it, especially if you're a software engineer, you're going to be able to understand regular expressions. So you're going to be able to use those things and understand if the if the, uh, the AI tool that you're using supports that and you can use that because it's a very powerful language. I, I uh, used it as a support analyst uh, when I was in banking, you know, looking for partial searches and then let the, you know, you can let the AI fill in the rest, you know, uh, you know, the computer find the rest and it's just, it can get really advanced in, if you know how to use it, it becomes a, a very specialized tool. Uh, but again, it's, you know, it's going to be, the thing about AI artists is AI is that it's going to open up to so many people. So there's going to be a lot of people be able to express themselves. Um, you know, um, yeah, I think it's just going to be a, a great tool um, for different people, for different things. And uh, there's going to be, you know, as a software engineer, there's so many use cases for this and there's potential. Uh, there's still, in, I'd say as a, um, as an artist and a software engineer, it's still very, very much in its early stages because there's still so much you need to iron out. Like, you know, there's, you know, discrepancies with images and thing, pe people's fingers, you know, then, you know, generating too many fingers and stuff like that. Um, it, it's, there's stuff like that. It, it just needs to, it would, it will get ironed out, not in the short term, I don't think, because it, you know, technology still takes time to develop, but, you know, I'd say in the free, you know, past the five year range, I suppose this stuff will get ironed out. For me, that why I see it's going is, you know, I mentioned it without sounding too nerdy. I think it's going to be like, a 2D Star Trek holodeck, basically, where when people can generate what they want and, you know, to play around with things, you know. So it'd be for the average user to advanced users. But yeah, I think it's a great tool and I'm looking forward to seeing where that goes uh, from a software engineering point of view and as an artist. But again, and also from a psychological point of view, I'm trying to not let personal fear and emotions get in the way of, um, you know, you, you know, get away using tools that could benefit my work, you know. Uh, again, there, there's still a lot of stigma. Like, to be honest, I couldn't, you know, the uh, stuff I make with AR art, I couldn't um, monetize that the way I can with my illustrations. Uh, again, you know, it's not something that people really warm to. But again, I'm not really creating art for people. I'm creating art to understand emotions. I'm creating art to tell stories. Uh, that's my objective. Um, it's not really, you know, I'm not there, you know, again, uh, this is the things that we're going to have to iron out of art between the definitions, the definition, this is, we haven't, you know, this is uncharted territory. So we're going to have to iron out the definitions, um, as we go along, uh, cause there's no, you know, there's no, currently no definitions because for me, this, you know, I think we've disagreed on a few things in terms of yeah. labelings, but again, these are the things that I eventually need to hash out. Um, you know, uh, I think it's good understand to what. I think it's good to have debate on these things. So, like, that's a question I was going to ask you. Like, in your opinion, what are, what do you think the definition is of an AI artist? Uh, again, I, I disagree with the definition of art, AI artist because yeah. I don't. I don't think. Um, the create the um, uh, it does, doesn't quite fit with uh, for me. There's more. It's just not. It, you can use it, but for me, it's it's just not accurate enough. Like to be, I like to be more precise. So for me, I'd be like, for, I would I would call myself uh, an art generator. You know, um, an art instigator. That's what my what? role is. Instigating art. Like for me, that's what I would call myself if I was using. Uh, AI as a tool in my art. I'd be an, uh, I'd use, I call myself an art instigator rather than an artist. As artists for me, you know, it is more about craftsmanship and, and, and putting ideas together, which I, you know, it just doesn't quite meet that criteria for me. I mean, it's, I'm not just saying anything negative about it. It's just I like to be more precise in my wording and how, to, you know, and be more, uh, what's the word, be more precise and true and not, use uh the word you know i feel like the, some people do use ai to you know uh, elevate themselves you know yeah. uh artificially you know which is you know it's 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 just insecurity uh but again it's it you know it affects the people that do use generally ai for you know to make good stuff and do good you know um, interesting stuff with it because I've seen some interesting stuff. You can play with concepts. Like I love some of the concepts that come out. Like you know, you can do you know, like um, uh, some of your favorite movies. What if they were 
steampunk theme you know if they you, uh, know, really cool. you know you know star trek steam steam steampunk you know like what if your favorite character was steampunk looking you know you can put that in there and generate that i think that's fun i think that's great the use of ar great way of looking at something different it's not something um yeah again you know and you can call yourself an ai instigator creating those sort of images and i'm like i'd be happy with that i'm like yeah that's fantastic i'd love to see that I'm not sure i'd part money to buy that stuff but yeah i'd definitely love to see more of it and you know be you know have it around rather than you know um ban the whole thing or you know just uh just literally just trying to stop it's stifle um ai basically in art you know again this is not just unique to um the art industry this is uh, going to have a cro- uh, effect across the board you know this is we're, obviously we're going to for the purpose of this talk we just keep it confined to art so we don't you know go off in a tangent which we do sometimes <laughs> we do <laughs> yeah it's really interesting so, yeah. what what that brings me to is um something that i've been talking to people about so, so and, and you sort of touched on it a little bit so looking ahead how do you envision AI is going to be uh, shaping the world of art over the sort of, that is in its infancy at the moment, but in sort of three to five years time, what's that going to look like? And how do you think artists are going to need to adjust? Uh, in the three to five year time, I think it's, this is probably the hardest period for uh, the AI art because you're, you're battling uh several things as from a software engineering point of view there's there's still a lot of work to be done and there's a lot of bugs to be ironed out um so it, there's going to be it's not going to be fully there it's nowhere near uh where it should be right now it's but you can kind of expect that from uh, you know it's still so early you know so you can't expect that it's not going to be uh a fully functional tool that you could mm. use so there's going to be some drawbacks you know for me i found it it to be quite imprecise first because i have like mm. I, i'm a I'm autistic so i have very clear images in my head that i want to generate uh it, it's just quite fiddly to do that um but again this is uh, no criticism it's just it, in the three to five year wage it, it's not going to be there yet there's going to be so much um workarounds you're going to need to do as an artist basically as a as software engineer and as an artist and uh, but yeah and also like i said the three to five years basically was when we start defining legally and the reality of ai are, uh, in art basically because that's two different things legal legal definitions is very different from the reality you know uh, so two doesn't always art conform this is what we're going to have to sort of iron out as a culture and a society to define mm-hmm. uh, what we're looking at and what we we're, you know what what we're facing what's in front of us basically uh rather than sort of everyone has their own tidbit which doesn't always line up you know we need a universal sort of um way of looking at things you know uh, defining things in terms oh, of this field and that's going to be in the next three to five years but yeah, yeah. but I mean, again I, I i i just think the sorry but yeah, the big thing for me would be use ai advance as an artist as a tool it's you know it's going to be there but it was but a big thing for me would be looking at this from a, a psychological point of view as well to, you know, see the impact, uh, you know, people's reactions for one. Is it our fear? You know, what, you know, is it, you know, is it, do they have a genuine um, stance that they believe in that it has some merit to it? Or are they just hate it because out of fear, uh, you know, you know, uh, you know, ban AI art, you know, it's like, yeah, but why? Yeah, but why? It's like, can you, explain elaborate you know is it just fear or is it something more rational you know like so again there's two sides here that i'm weary of the people the artists that are insecure against ai art and the people that do use ai art but just to buff their own ego which is i don't like both those cases i think they damage the the ai the uh, ai ai in art in the industry art industry basically and i'm weary of those sort of two groups because they have their own agendas and it's not um objective you know like i like to be objective i like to keep insecurities out of the you know the conversation and try to talk things rationally and if there is concerns you know what are the logical concerns can we talk it out can you communicate them mm-hmm. rather than just put you know putting up a wall basically yeah. you know uh, so it's, that's that's the that's the thing i'm on the i look out for so as a software engineering point of view i'm looking at 
uh, how the technology is progressing from a psychological point of view. I'm looking at uh, you know the attitudes and why people uh, are the way they are towards AI art. You know, and the third one is as an artist, I see it as a very powerful tool to generate concepts and play around with ideas without committing. And then you know again, it's uh, you know in the right hands, you can. It's, it's, it's a great tool. You know, like if you put you know i think we spoke about this before you put a pencil in someone's hand they can maybe do a few things write a few words but you put it in an artist's hands they're going to be able to create some amazing art with it mm. so you put the tool in the right hands you're going to you, you'll be able to create something amazing i think there's going to be so many talented minds out there not necessarily mine probably but like i uh, you know i'm i can see the massive potential there, and, I, and, I, and i'm enjoying it i'm enjoying the experience playing with it it's uh, still frustrating at times, but you know, only the software it's, it's, engineering, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I find the software engineering a bit side because I'm like, okay, you know, this is not how I would program this. <laughs> but then <laughs> I'm not amazing. I'm not a amazing programmer, but I, I look at things and I'm like, okay, this can be done better from a programmer point of view. Like, uh, but again, it's these these are the things that are going to eventually get worked out. But in the short term, it's going to be a very difficult transition because you've got the negative attitudes from uh, you got, I not say negative, but uh, toxic attitudes from AI artists and uh, and artists in alike. You know, I think they're both toxic. Um, I think they, if we can get stamp that out of that conversation, then we can actually get to the core of AI in art and actually see the benefits and how it can help us as a species, as a human being. You know, it's going to maybe eliminate uh, some of those uh, small commission jobs. Probably those can probably go because a lot of artists say if you want to design a logo, you just go on the art, yep, give me a chair that, that looks like this, and, you know, and that's my logo. You know, that's nothing wrong with that. That's, you know, again, that's, uh, you know, it's, you're just going to have to find new ways to adapt, you know, as an artist. If you're, that's your work, line of work, obviously, you know, there's, there's no way around that. You're going to have to be like Picasso, basically, find well, uh, another way around from, you know, yeah. find another way of living. You know, those that don't adapt just get left behind. That's why, for me, it's important to stay with technology and understand where it's going so you can navigate the world, basically. Otherwise, you're going to get caught with your pants down. You know? Yeah. Well, AI is not going anywhere, but then art isn't going anywhere either. And I think your point not about that. you put a pencil, and I've had this conversation with other people before, not just yourself, that, you know, you put a, pe a, a pencil, a pen, a, a, anything like a, a paintbrush or you know, even a, a sculpting knife, you know, in the hands of a person that isn't artistic, then you're going to get A, B, C. If you put it in the hand of a true artist, then you're going to get something extraordinary mm -hmm. anyway, which gives me hope, actually, because, you know, at the beginning of all this, I, like, I was never afraid of it, but I didn't understand it as much as I do mm -hmm. now. Um, but what I was, have been excited by is that there's now uh, people that are honing the the craft of whatever we want to call it AI art or or whatever we want to call it. What did you call it before? Um, uh, AI it, art instigator. Uh, that's it, art instigator. I love that term, by the way. Um, I think. Thank you. I, I think there's there's exciting times to come. And to your point, there are things that are not anywhere near there yet and there is going to be a need for adjustment so if we were to look at sort of the five to ten years time what are your thoughts on the development of the world of ai and art sort of that far out because in this world five to ten years is actually quite long these That's days quite a long time yeah i mean to us if you're looking at the early five years time i mean this is still going to be still developing but the 10 year mark i think they're going to be some significant if you, you look at a decade you know there's going to be a decade of advancement and looking at this this is going to grow um again um the, the a lot with technology i find with technology a lot of people think progress progression of technology is going to be steady but that's not the case with tech you know uh, mm. when, when you look at technology how it's progressed it's it goes like this and then steep goes a bit and then steep you know it's 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 you just make it, it advances very very quick you know it once you hit a certain point you just like just goes straight up the so you might not think it's moving that fast but then it hits a point and it just 
spirals up. And I think when it sorts here, it's 10 year mark, I think there's going to be massive uh, refinements. I think it's, it's going to be a much more polished tool where we are. I mean, it's, it's not, I don't think it's going to be quite the you know, Star Trek holodeck level, but I think it's, that's what it's moving towards. I think, you know, I think it's going to be a very fun, interesting time because it's just going to be opening up to so many users. Like, you know, uh, again, people worry about it's going to dilute the art market. You know, again, you know, I've worked as an artist uh, in the market, you know, and, I, and I've sold, I've nearly come up to 7,000 prints now of my artwork. And my time as an artist, I found people, people like, people have, we're such a varied human being. That's why you can't call uh, Earth a planet of what I call planet of hats, where we all, we're, we're all wearing the same hat and we all behave in the same way. We're so, re- white, you know, varied in our uh you know uh tastes and you know our you know temperaments and stuff like that uh you know i think it's just going to be a you know if you just you know everyone if you can find a market i mean again uh when you do what i do go to the market and sell your stuff at shows and exhibitions and markets and you're you're in the court of public opinion right yeah. and people are they like it or they don't you know you have a float or sink you know and it's again there's everyone there's so many niches people can find you know so it's i would be surprised if there was a, a, you know a niche pe- people dig out a niche for themselves right now i um probably couldn't you know set monetize any of the uh, you know the art i used ai to assist it in but it doesn't stop me from using it and playing with it and um it's a way of expressing my ideas for me uh, art is an expression of consciousness and you know it, it, and when you're doing kind of input you're expressing yourself because for me again i i see the difference between writing and creative writing you know so that's also is going to play a part in you know the input that you you put in you know that's going to determine you know what comes out you know again you're not have the craftsmanship there but you're going to have the, you know, partnership in terms of the text, but not the obviously the image side of it. So you're going to be lacking that. For me, that's the only drawback as an artist. Like when I'm crafting something, like you know, that time I'm, you know, for me, one of my illustrations takes me three to four weeks to do. It gives me that time to, you know, uh, reflect on things and think about things more deeply and refine things as I go along and take open my you know, change my, sometimes it changes my path because I, I get to this point. I'm like, oh, this actually works better. I'm just going to go, you know, try that way. But you kind of lose that a little bit. That sort of development, you know, um, in terms of, you know, ev- ev- yeah, that's the word, evolution. Yeah, so you need, you lose of that sort of uh, evolution to some sort of uh, different ideas, you know, where you just go from A straight to B, you know. So that's the only thing. But again, that's not a, you know, not a criticism. Um, for me, it's just, you're going to lose that element, but you're going to gain other things. Again, uh, that's just something to be aware of uh, when you're doing, you know, with AI art and stuff like that. You're going to lose that element. So if I go down that path, which I do, which I have, I'm going to lose that sort of part of the art world. But again, it allows me to generate ideas at such a high volume, which is what I've done. And I'm like, you know, generate, you know, you know, last last couple of days, I generate like 30, 40 ideas probably about two of them were oh, actually yeah. decent you know out of decent ideas that i liked and i kept them and i and i molded it into you know what you saw basically uh, you yeah. know one of my artworks i don't know if you could show that <laughs> on the video uh you know yes, but, well we've put yeah. lots of links and things to the different artworks so yeah. yeah don't worry about that people will yeah. be so so yeah them. so stuff like that it's, it's again it's, it's you know it's about expressing yourself and you know again it's not art it's not always about money uh, but you know you know it's there's art sometimes it's just about expressing yourself you know but at the same time there is a lot more to being an artist as a lot of people found out the hard way you know than just drawing you know or just you know painting or whatever you know there's a lot more to being an artist than just creating just creating a piece of art you know there, there's your you know you know your your politics your personality you know uh, yeah because a lot of people they don't just buy the art they buy they buy you you know so yep. it depends on your 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 character and you know as an art as an artist it's a humbling experience like coming from a banking background where you know I was on a comfortable salary to 
to being an artist basically and be able to be able to talk and connect with people you know because for me art is about connecting and that's why it's both you know most of that seven thousand prints i've sold is you know 99 percent of that has been in person and that's what i wow. focus on because yeah so i focus on that heavily because it's about human connection it's about people in the day that's why i try not to be insecure about it like a classic example would be down the market um i i'm as far as i know uh, at the time of this recording i'm the only artist that allows people to take pictures because for me i recognize that if someone wants to steal my work they'll do it anyway so why penalize the people who just want to take a few pictures to remember their day by you know and yeah. share with their friends possibly you know come back and buy it later you know again it's it's just pure insecure you know like oh don't take pictures of my art no no, no. it's like yeah they, they, it's so you know they're just normal people like if, if someone wants to steal it they'll go on my website and take it anyway yeah. you know? <laughs> i i think so. that's an interesting question I was, that um i'd like to ask you then around um how much impact ai is going to have on um things like sales and the business side of things because you know you're mentioning that you know these other impacts that it's going to have like from a business perspective do you think ai will be some, helping support artists and how they run their business do you think oh massively massively uh, again uh, i i tried to not talk about it because i didn't want to go outside too much outside the scope of what we're talking about but yeah uh, if you're going there I'm, I'm happy to go there so yeah ai art is well ai in general is going to be massive you know it's going to change the way we work you know it, that's why if you're not learning how to incorporate ai into your work you are going to get left behind mm. you are seriously going to get left behind you're going to handicap yourself so badly because art for me you know risk, you know you can use ar to respond to to messages to emails that you're you know, you, you know that are sensitive topics you know you can refine use it to refine emails that you're sending out you refine you know you can tell it to analyze things you can tell you can ask it uh, questions based on its vast knowledge you know so and you can get it to you know you know like classic example i was had an application form for you know, just, you know just filling out an application for form for an, a space and they wanted a, a biography for my uh, you know for my art and i i wrote like a i had on my finger like a 400 page biography but they wanted like a hundred uh, uh word thing i just chucked into ai i said look can you just break this down to 400 words and then maybe tweak it here and there you know but it's fuck, it's a new sorry i didn't mean to swear right, there. Um, <laughs> okay sorry <laughs> i tried to be i tried to be P, uh, you know pg <laughs> so but yeah it's it's this is what it's useful for it's just so many limits that, you know you can just create it you can use it and i can i see i can use it you know as a as a person you know you can use it for customer support you can use it to analyze data you can use it to analyze trends you know like what's it's just so much potential and, and if you find if you need to start finding ways uh people need to start finding ways to incorporate into their lives and yeah. how they do things because if you get stuck you, you need to start getting comfortable with it because it's not going to go away and it's wow. only going to get better and it's basically it's what's going to the difference between you know you be living a modern life or you're going to get left behind because you it's a, such a powerful tool to polish things up and be able to interact with each other in a in a in a healthy way because sometimes you can say look you know to ai you know amount of times you know someone's you know we've all got that sort of email where that's triggered our ego baited our egos like oh we're writing this email back and you know again when people when you do that stage i always recommend people and i always do it is leave it for a day you yep. know and don't, if I... don't don't ever send that sort of thing yeah feel free to vent on that email but make sure you take the email out so you don't actually hit send you know that's what i do vent out vent it out Ooh. And then, yep. and then, oh, and then, then afterwards, so much of that, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then I throw it, you know, and I'm like, calm down. And then I'm like, okay, throw it into the AI. I say, look, can you just pacify this, make it yep. you know, take the aggression out of it, or whatever, you know, you know. And then it just it it helps. It really, yep. really helps. It makes things and sound I professional and courteous, without you know uh becoming emotionally unstable what i call or insecure you know i think what's and really interesting like, about that is that creatives and artists 
you know, you and I have talked about this before. Creatives and artists often find the business side of being a creative and an artist quite difficult. If AI mm. is going to be able to help um, make that easier, a lot easier, mm. I think. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, I'm, I've I've really built it into a lot of my practices, not just art, but also in my day-to-day -day, day -day use when I'm doing admin work, uh, looking at data, you know, I'm, you know, I'm always thinking, how can I, you know, get AI to help me with this? Mm. You know, because, you know, like, it's just that, you know, stuff, you know, like, you know, like, like stuff I wrote about, uh, the, the, understanding the basic guide to psychology basically the stepping stone you know I, I used the ai to help me i wrote the article myself then i got ai to reword it in a way that i liked you know and then, then I, you know, I obviously customized it a little bit you know and just tweak it here and there but i you know i fed it what i gave it and i said look can you make it sound a certain way and fact check it make sure it sounds logical and points line up and is there anything, you know, I can ask things like AI, is there anything you dispute in there? You know, again, oh, you know, I, good. yeah, again, yeah. it's great. It's great for that. And, uh, so, you know, again, most people would think of that because, again, it comes down to psychology. People don't want to ask this question because they feel insecure and it feels like they're undermining themselves. It's like, no, this could actually be a tool to strengthen your knowledge, you know, and, you know, show up your weaknesses. You know, it's like, no, if you're going to deny that and hide, you're going to be insecure and, not be able to ask those hard questions you know then mm. yeah you, you, you handicap yourself you know like again it's you know, it's a great tool it's just one of many use cases that you can do to improve your quality of life the way you work and just become more efficient you know just more efficient you know and it's just it's great because i got to refine my ideas through ai and so look what do you think you know how i define autism you know i got to talk about you know for me Autism is a, a type of um, human condition that is almost like what I call droid effect. We have this sort of android effect on our brain that, you know, so we perceive things from a very uh, almost like computer like way. So short term, short story is people are like computers, but with autistic people, we have less RAM. That's where I describe okay. it to, uh, to people. That. <laughs> that's, the, that's the easiest way. And I explain a little bit more detail but not too much detail because i don't like to be overload people i like to give people just the very basics and they can make fill in the gaps from themselves you know but that's how i describe autism and i used uh, ai to have debates on that just between me and ai and to refine my ideas literally yeah refine my ideas i had debates with ai i said you know Oh, I don't know. Cool. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know it was possible. I but I got into arguments with AI. You know, I said, "Look, be sure," because I think this and this, 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 and then they're like, "Yeah," and it's it's great because it's you know it's it's all based on logic, you know, and it's I just love like it. yeah. it's amazing. Oh, I'm so going to give that a go. So that's that's why that's why you know I'm quite proud of the the work, the two articles I wrote about uh, mental, you know, our minds, the psychology and what autism is, you know, because I, you know, I, you know, hopefully I drilled down to it and I try to, you know, be objective as much as possible and iron out where any confusion might be, you know, and try not to use, to be too technical, you know, use examples and uh, metaphors that people can understand, you know. Uh, so it's, this is this is just a, just that's just a glimpse of what I've been using AI for. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is just a tool, and as long as you're not afraid of it, there's just so many you, you can start to open. Like a classic example, um, when you when someone is toxic to you, you are less likely to see their strengths, right? Mm. You're likely to see all their bad points. You never want to see their good points. That's what's happening here with your fear. When you fear AI. You're not going to see its full potential. You're not being able to see all these avenues that I've used to come up with to say, look, oh, I can ask AI this. What, you know, tell me where my argument's weak. Why? And explain why you think that's weak, you know? And I, and I'll respond back to this. This is why I think you're wrong. And they're like, oh, yeah, but you know, and just go back and forth on you until your point you're like where you're happy that, you, you know, uh, something's been logically ironed out. You know, you can talk it out with someone about, you know, it's just yeah, you just got to overcome your insecurities, be able to see the tool for what it is, and be able to open up your mind to different possibilities. Otherwise, you you're going to close, become very tunnel vision. You're not going to be able to use it to its full effect. 
that but yeah, the potential say? alone of AI being used to iron out challenging your own thinking is extraordinary. Like not just for creatives and artists, but for anybody out there that's got an idea tossing around in their brain and they want to challenge whether or not you could use it for business concepts and so many things. Like, so many, I, mean, so many. I mean, Shark Tank and Dragon's Den would probably take on a whole, not one, yeah. but half as fun. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's it's, it's insane. I mean, to be honest, with with AI, you you got to remember, as it learns, it's going to retain the information that you fed it before. It's not like Google; you, it wipes, you know, because um, the analogy is, you know, to stop sentient happening in like computers in like in, like sort of fantasy world like Star Wars, yeah. you wipe the computer every day so it doesn't develop consciousness you know but with ai they're remembering they're evolving so they're remembering your past conversations they're like so you're like oh you can ask it about past conversations like wow yeah what about this you know it's you know it's it's adapting to you so you're going to be able to um, very it's going to be very malleable and very custom to you and it's be able to you'll be able to literally have really deep rich conversations you know um you know which you, which you can't with you know like google because you, it gets once you finish searching you know it, that's it just resets you know you're not going to remember anything unless yeah. you have cookies and stuff like that but that, that's not what i'm getting at here <laughs> but yeah uh but yeah this is very this is what i'm saying that's what i was trying to you know get at that the, the ai is such a powerful powerful tool and it's far reaching uh, and you, if you open up your mind, it's just you, you, you can find creative ways to use it and you know help you, you know, through life. You, know, you it's just, think it's, not, it's there? It's there to help you. you know? It is. It is. Do you think that there are going to be? I don't know. I want to, I'm using this word very broadly. A whole new breed of creatives and artists coming through that. And the generations coming behind us, they're just going to look at the world in a very different way artistically because of AI. Uh, yes, uh, yes, and no. Uh, I do think there's going to be a, a, a new revolution with this, uh, but I think I still do believe in traditional art as well. Yeah, me too. Uh, you know, <laughs> I think I, I, I'm, you know, coming from my art, I, there's, there's just certain things that you, you can do with traditional art that you can't do with AI, and vice versa. Uh, but again, I I think the the playing fields, you know, art is a big big category, you know, like mm -hmm. and we're constantly always adding different mediums to it, and this for me this just is no different, you know, like again the only thing for me and uh, is again honesty, you know, are we honestly uh, about this, you know, are you fearful, are you insecure about this? What are you using? Are you using art to general, you know, buff up your ego and you know, put down, you know, I've seen artists use uh, AI art to put down real artists, which is ridiculous, you know. It's just, it's, it's, it's for me that sort of behavior is toxic. Again, we, I, if we can iron out this toxic behavior from both sides of the aisle and just use it constructively, then yeah, it's, it's it means. But then again, I think this is more uh, going beyond art itself. This yeah. is, going down the psychology route of insecurity in general uh, you know that's why i am promoting uh healthy mindsets you know understanding our minds you know just just understand why you think the way you do and understand when you're acting like a human being because a human being is about being logical and empathetic where the more insecure you are the more likely you are to get defensive and angry and make things about you you know so that's why it's important to you know, try and dis distance yourself from that emotion. Understand when your emotions and your ego is in play, because you're, you know, we all have an ego, and there's, you know, if, you know, we need to, need to manage so it doesn't affect, you know, tint things and look so you can look at things in a healthy way. Otherwise, if you're more secure, you're going to look at things in a negative light, and you're never going to, you know, you're going to have that tint which stops you progressing as a person. You know. Yeah. So again, yeah, I won't go too much in detail because this is bit off topic but yeah, yeah going yeah. back to the ai art yep that that makes sense though and i think you know <laughs> having had conversations with other artists that like you know you know tom because he's also part of our ftsq gallery crew 
you know, he, he's like he's like yourself. He is an artist, a fi- you know, he's a fine artist that can do it without AI, and he is somebody that's also playing around with it a lot, like yourself, creating mm. a lot of concepts and ideas mm. and things. And I think I remember seeing a comment that was made to him on Facebook by another artist who was kind of, to your point, fearful about what, you know, is he not worried about it and blah, 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 and that it'll wipe out his his other art and he literally came mm. back and said what why does it have to be an either or and it doesn't mm. you know to your point yeah, yep. it's not one or the other um which i think is yep. quite interesting it, it, it's, yeah. it's not um what's the word symbiosis is that the word i don't know, you know where yeah. you, you don't you don't need one or the other you know yeah uh, it doesn't need one or the other. But yeah, I, I think it's, again, this is insecurity behavior that we need to eventually stamp on you know, this conversation, you know, from I think, I think it will naturally just happen. I think as more people just. Oh, yeah, there's no stopping it. The wheels in motions yeah. as much as it's just this, you know, like your your colleague, uh, you know, or fellow, art, or fellow artist that you just mentioned. In that scenario for me, when you're dealing with uh, toxic people who are going to be toxic towards you, whether it's a, an artist or in, an, art, an art instigator, you know, one of those two categories, they, if they're toxic, for me, I treat, you know, the way I explain insecure people is they're like, they're like, it's like, 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 like a lifeguard. A lifeguard approaches someone with their foot out. The reason they approach someone with their foot out is to create distance. Because for me, their, their option is either I try to save you and we both drown but because of your erratic behavior is going to pull me down or you just drown and I leave you to your struggles. That's the option of a lifeguard. That's why it has to, they have to put your feet out. Otherwise, you're gonna, the other person is going to pull you down if they don't calm down. It's look, calm down or I'm not going to save you. You know, it's The same with insecure people. If you get too close to them, they're going to pull you down their trauma and their toxic behavior. So with people like that, I think it's just, Best to keep your distance, you know, not wish them, you know, don't be no negative feelings, no hard feelings. It's just, you know what, this is toxic behavior and I'm, I'm going to stay, you know, not going to let that pull me down and just sort of back off, you know. That's my approach to the, these sort of behavior. Like when I see, I see is that oh, um, anti AI and I see, you know, these art instigators that are, you know, using it to you know elevate themselves by putting down artists it's like, it's just it's just toxic behavior yeah. you need to stay away from you know again the, these are just drowning people that are just going to pull you down there you know toxic behavior and again that's why it's, that's eventually that's my answer to how to stamp out that sort of behavior you know i think to so your do you point, think? i think to your point like everything else that you've been mentioned from the software perspective and the art itself but it will just even itself out you know yeah definitely, definitely. Even itself uh, out. It, it won't happen but it's just be able to for me the reason i say this is just so we, people can all be aware and mm. don't get drawn into it you know get yeah. drawn into these sort of uh toxic games that you know these insecure people are playing you know it's just like no, yeah. it's not it's not constructive it's not constructive no. to the to the you know the development of AI in art, which is, you know, uh, be able to use it and understand that this is going to open up to a wide range of people. People can be able to express themselves, not necessarily for money, you know, but be able to express themselves and t- tell their stories. And you've got tools, you know, you got, you got artists that can use it as, uh, as assisted, assisted AI art, or they can use it to generate concept. You know, they can, concepts, like, you know, I said before, you can, generate your favorite tv show as a in a steampunk aesthetics which is going to be interesting to look at i find that yeah. stuff interesting you know not, not again like i said i wouldn't part what cash for it but it's something i would love to see and i'd like to see more of it uh, you know and this is this, just an example one example of uh, fun things you can do with ai art for entertainment you know this is it's fantastic it's a it's a great tool and i think um long, long as we can keep our sort of fears and insecurities out of this uh, i think we can we can I think it will be have its place in our society, and I think it's going to be very uh, beneficial to a, a number of people. Uh, yeah. well, that brings me to uh, a thought, actually, that I just had: is like, if you were to pick one thing around your your art and AI that you haven't tried yet, but you're really excited to give a go using AI, what would that be? Uh, I really like 
the idea because it's not quite there yet and uh, for me uh, that, that the ai art assisted art i generated for you uh, it was not for you but gener- generated but yeah. i i really enjoyed that the problem was I just i i like it to be a bit more accurate i just just need it that little bit more accurate so i can uh, make it a bit more malleable like for classic example like um you know just ha- you know have uh, you know give more detail in some areas less detail in other areas right. you know yeah. to, and, you know be able to have more control yeah conciseness of pushing certain things back and pushing things forward you know because my mind thinks very much in those terms that's why generally i wear black is because <laughs> I, black is what your brain doesn't process it it just sees it as blank so when something is like white you're going to notice that because that just makes it pop it pushes this to the background and pushes that to the foreground that's how my mind works you know yeah. and i you know that's how you know, so our not just my mind our mind processes black and white black is negative space white is positive space so you can see that's something there that's why when i cross the road and i'm wearing black i'm very careful because i know your brain doesn't really register me there so i generally wear like a a, a yellow thing around my bag just so people can see that there's something uh, a person there rather than wearing this black figure walking out your brain gets you know get hit by a car because of someone's brain didn't pick me up you know i'm so always mindful of that because i know so the nuance of so the nuance of ai is what you're most excited about being developed yeah so that's what i'd be more control over the concepts and the ideas because i again you know it took me 40 attempts to get to get to two things i wanted from ai I've, hopefully that goes down to, i don't have to slog through so much to get mm. what i want out of it so again a bit more uh, again it's, i've seen tools that are starting to do that uh, again these, these are great i think to be honest, even like um the, those photoshop animators you know photoshop uh, art people i think they're going to be great it's a great tool for them mm. i think they're going to the ones that benefit from but even though it's funny because they're the one that are most fearful of it but I think they're the ones that are going to be benefit from it the most uh, because yeah, I think it's, they they've got the they've got the they've got the the know how to manipulate those images even further than I have. Uh, again, I, I I'm I'm going to looking forward to to me. My thing is I'm going to be looking if, if I was to create art, I look forward to creating images that uh, so I can build around because I don't like um for me I'm not a, I'm not sure I would create. AI art, but I'd like to create AI assisted art. You know, there's nothing wrong with creating AI art. Again, I'm not opposed to that. Like I said before, I enjoy some of the concepts that come out of that. And it's, it's, it's just interesting, really interesting. It's, it's really um, interesting. And I, and I, I find it, it's literally just stretches the imagination even further. And it just allows us to explore m- more countless possibilities, you know. Uh, so to me, I'm looking forward to be able to use it as a tool to generate. Uh, images that I can build my art around that are more sort of in keeping, uh, you know, I can customize it a bit more, a bit more control over it. Like, again, I, I I like the generation, but I just need that bit more control over like the textures and lighting and you know pushing, you know, just the yeah. little little artist's touch to it, you know, uh, that I like. But, my yeah. instinct is is that that will happen more in the three to five year than the five to ten year. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen the tool now. It just it just doesn't work that great, but it's it's there. <laughs> it's there. It's there. They're definitely trying that. So yeah, I can see that being developed in the next three to five years. And I think yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna, it's gonna be a very interesting time for AI. And well, again, not just in art, but as a business person, yeah. you know, as a site. I mean, it's gonna change so many. Without going into detail, it's gonna change the fabric of our society. Like when we have fully realized AI art, you know, have automated cars everywhere. You know, you, you know, you, taxi drive your taxi driver is just going to be a robot. You know, yeah. <laughs> which is which is you know for an, for an antisocial autistic person like me, it's, that's a dream. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the l- less humans I interact with, the better. But yeah, <laughs> uh, that's why I live in the you know, that's why I live in a church, <laughs> like a church. Yeah, your place I is, I love it. Got a double doctor. What's that? <laughs> I said I love your place. It's amazing. 
Um, <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's, a, it's, it's literally a hermit paradise. <laughs> it's a, it's a paradise. <laughs> it really is. You see it. It's literally a hermit paradise. <laughs> but it's, it's very, very much an artistic paradise as well. Like when I walked in and you told me it was an, a converted church and I walked in, I was like, this is exactly what I was expecting from an artist <laughs> studio. It's perfect. I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I I'd be honest. I do come from a creative family. Uh, to be fair, my I have three sisters. Um, uh, one I think is quite an exceptional artist. I I um, my, people might not think it, but I I personally, one of my sisters, I think I really love her work. I think it's in some ways it's stronger than me. And I learned some of my illustration how to draw through her. She actually is the one who one of my my middle sister uh cherry uh shout out to her uh <laughs> she's the one that went to art school and but studied illustration and i learned um some you know watching her i w- learned some how to illustrate you know she taught me how to illustrate negative space and stuff like that stuff i was stuck on i could ask her it was great because she had that background in it so for me she's the real artist in the family, even though i don't think she gets the credit she deserves um but I, but my other two sisters are uh they they're pretty good art as well ones you know they you know they make drawn for you know like our, our family we're growing up in, in secondary school here here in london we, we were quite known for art so like our family were known to be quite good sketches or whatnot you know oh, so that- yeah i come from that background um uh, but yeah it's, it's quite weird because i've come from that background but i went into a very conservative environment because i started off in the police for two years uh, then I moved into banking for 11 years before I became an artist. Uh, and that's all. And, but that's, that, don't get wrong, it's, those skills have served me well because, again, there's more to the art than being an artist. You have to understand uh, how to manage things, project manage. You know, you have to be able to um, you know, look at things and optimise your process because that's one of my key strengths. I'm good at looking at things and, and streamlining it and, and documenting things. That's well, AI is skill perfect. I have. All of that, isn't it? Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's why it's that's why I've got better. But what question for you then? What have have you tried to use AI in anything? Yeah, I have not from an artist perspective specifically, but I've used it for using my own methodologies and the consultancy side of things and uh, a lot of research and also also to your point. Um, about like if I've, if I've written something that's like two pages long and I need to cut it down, I've used it, you know, it's all my writing and just using it to edit. It edits way better than I do. So, yeah, I'm definitely using it. And also in my accounting yes. packages, yes. you know, gener- AI machine learning is going on. So, yeah, lots of lots of different things. I'm not sure if I'd want to use it for my art, to be honest. I'm not sure. Well, I, I think your reaction to me when I started, uh, when I mentioned that I have debates and arguments with AI was, I'm gonna do that was now. one of quite surprising. Would you, is that something you would consider oh, doing? Oh, yes. Like, <laughs> like being, I love you know, using it to debate. critique your work. Oh, it'd be amazing. <laughs> I would love I think, it's a, I think it's useful to critique your work because they're not doing it for emotional point. The only emotion is going to be from you. Yeah, so I love that. If you and can what- manage that, you can literally ask things. But again, there is some limitation, right? AI is not perfect. It does sometimes lie and it does sometimes, you know, like um, make stuff up. So you got to be careful of that side because there's times where I found like, wait a minute, you've made that up. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. not true. We and, will be arguing, you know, said, and they're like, yeah, and they're like, AI is consistently refusing to back down. I was like, you are talking rubbish now. It's quite funny because nice um, we are going to have to wrap up in a minute. I was just going to say the, no uh, the, art, uh, the hosts for the other with AI. Um, yeah. what, what, is the, what, other, what other people have said? Sorry, so the, sorry, so the, sorry to talk over you. I don't know. That's right. The, the other hosts and, uh, and I have also been talking about the mistakes that's been making as well. So that's not the, uh, yeah, you're def- definitely not the only one picking up on different mistakes. I don't think it's intentionally making mistakes. I think, and I do think it comes down to the crafting of your prompting for sure. Learning mm. how to prompt better as well. So yeah. Uh, I, the only thing I find is, you know, the arguments I've got with AI. You know, sometimes it it corrects itself and says and puts its hand up, and then other times I found it just doubles down and says, "No, <laughs> no, you're wrong. 
literally telling me to, oh, I love to go away, basically. And I'm like, yeah, oh, excuse AI. me? <laughs> Bullshit, so it, yeah, it's just it's just, it's just, it's just how it, how you but yeah, it's it's interesting because I I'll be interested to see how other artists respond to what we our comments today. Yeah, because I think we be. covered a lot of things, covered a lot of things. Like hopefully, I think we covered it in an objective way and not an emotional antagonistic way. Yeah, uh, I hope it's, it's been you know it's yeah <laughs> has, you know how has it you know has it for me I'm I'm not pro you know. Uh, anti AI and not 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 you know exactly pro AI either AI mm. you know art either. I like to be in, so I like to see myself in between and look at both sides of the argument, see what's rational, and you know see you know if they can you can back it up and as long as they don't show l- that it's driven coming from some some sort of insecurity, then I'm happy to sort of have an open discussion and take that on board. You know, yeah. so I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to you know, uh, seeing where this goes. And I, I, the most thing I like in the three to five years is to iron out uh, the definitions. And that's that, because I think once we got that, we can clear things up more and people can uh, know where they stand. You know, that's the most I think you're the only person yeah. with that question on their mind. So, But anyway, thank yeah. you so much anyway. for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure, as always, no conversation. I have one more question to ask, which I asked, Try and ask um, uh, any of my guests is if you okay. could, if you could recommend or if you could think of a person that you think would, you would love to hear as a guest on this podcast, Creators with AI. Do you have anybody in your mind? It could be somebody famous. It could just be a friend. Is there somebody as a creative that you think would be a really good podcast guest? Yeah, uh, probably my hero. <laughs> uh, She's a singer, a very famous singer. Probably, if you if you grew up in the nineties, you've probably heard of her. Her name's Jules. Uh, she's you know, a folk uh, country singer. Yes. Uh, fantastic. Like for me, she's my hero. Like in a lot, you know, platonically speaking, I love her. You know, yep. like she's amazing as an artist. I think uh, her art. Uh, as an artist, love her work, love you know, love her mind, the way she thinks, and from a psychological point of view, you know, like her, you know, her understanding of psychology uh, has transformed my life, and it's really helped me, you know, uh, through my day to life life, and it's had influence on my personal work myself. So she's my hero, and I, I, I love everything she talks about. I think she's she's an absolute gold gem. Like just the stuff she comes out is just gold. That's what I can oh, say. Like, it's just so, yeah. Well, her, her full name is Jules Kelcher. So she's from Alaska. She's um, oh, that's quite, cool. a, you know, she's a, she's a self-made person, you know. So I'll try and find a link into the, into the yeah, note. Well. She's, she's amazing. Like, to be honest, like, I, I can't gush about her enough, like, because she's just, for me, just an awesome human being. Like, just, I'm put it, that don't get me wrong, list. she's flawed as well. But if you can get her on there, oh, oh. my God, my well, mind would be blown. We've had Daniel Beddingfield <laughs> already, so that's not oh, wow. out of oh, the... Jesus, I haven't heard that name since <laughs> for a long time. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. geez, but anyway, that's, thank you for that. Yeah. I'm going to look Jewel up and see if we can put her on the list. Um, thank you very <laughs> much for being on today and giving us your time. And quite, a, quite an interesting sure. angle because of the software angle and the the psychology angle and the art angle. So thank you for that. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening. And uh, we will put lots of links to see Pete's uh, artwork up around on our show notes. And uh, continue being curious, everybody. Yeah, uh, yep. Yeah. And if you want to, um, if you want to find, uh, talk to me in person. I'm at Brick Lane every weekend at Backyard Market. Okay. Yep. We'll we'll find links for all that as well. Thank you, everybody. Stay curious. Bye. Creatives with AI is a proud member of the AI Podcast Network. To stay up to date with current episodes and show information, subscribe to their newsletter at podcastnetwork.ai. And don't forget to follow the show on your favorite podcast platform so you'll always get the episodes as soon as they're available. Thanks again for listening and stay curious. curious.